I have a word from the Lord. Amen. And I know that I know that I know it is a word from the Lord today. This is what God laid on my heart to share this morning. I have a feeling it will be a great blessing to you. The Facebook for some reason has ended. Uh, the YouTube appears to still be going, I imagine, but we had some kind of an issue. I'm not sure what was happening, but the Facebook's been interrupted. I'm not sure what's going on with that. Uh, and so if you're, if you're on Facebook, I hope you knew enough to switch over to YouTube. I apologize. We don't know what the problem might be. Once again, this is another issue that we probably wouldn't be facing if we had a spot of our own. But as of this moment here in Tennessee, we don't have anywhere near enough people to uh, even begin to think about getting a space of our own. Kind of a little bit broken hearted to be honest with you. Uh, when I first began to announce and began to share online that we were moving our services to Nashville, I got such an outpouring of interest and so many people that uh, came back to me with positive feedback saying they wanted to come be part of the church. And I, to be honest with you, I was expecting on the very first Sunday, I was expecting at least a dozen or so people to show up. But frankly, the vast majority of those people have still not shown up. Uh, some of them are now ghosting us, and I tried to be in contact with them, and they've just kind of gone off the edge of the earth. Uh, but we need you to help us pray that God will send us people with a mind to worship, with a mind to pray and seek His face, with a mind to live for God with passion, with a mind to be part of a great revival in these last days. We so desperately need revival in the church of the living God today. Amen. If you have your Bibles today, and you'd be kind enough to join me. Hold on one second. Here we go. There we go. If you'd be kind enough to join me in the very first chapter of the Old Testament prophet Jeremiah. The very first chapter. Those of you who have heard me talk about how the Lord called me to preach and how he confirmed that call twice. Once through the great man of God, Dr. C.M. Ward, and once through uh, a great preacher of the gospel, Brother Nori Kogel, prophetically. Uh, you've heard me talk about this specific portion of scripture. And I found it interesting that the Lord gave this to me this week to be our primary text. Jeremiah 1, we're going to read only verses 4 through 8 today. Jeremiah 1, verses 4 through 8. I read from the King James text today. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak. For I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child. For thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces. For I am with thee. 
to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Master, we love you, God, today. We thank you for the presence of the Lord. We feel in the house of God as we worship you and lift up your name and extol the greatness of this great gospel which you have gone to such lengths to provide for lost humanity. The word of God is now needing to go forth and the man of God requires the anointing of the Holy Ghost to touch from heaven. Lord, I need that divine oil to be poured out upon my spirit that I might have the strength that I might have the ability to convey to the people of God that which you would have me convey and to do so in a manner as you would have me to do so. Touch today, O oh God, the heart, the hearing of every hearer. Let every person under the sound of my voice, be it live, be it recording, let every person under the sound of my voice have a heart that is cultivated and made ready to receive that seed which is the Word of God. For we ask that today in none other than Jesus' wonderful, wonderful name. Amen. Praise God and amen. I want to talk to us for a while today on the topic, I know you. I know you. The Lord said in our primary text today, Then the word of the Lord came unto me, meaning Jeremiah, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. We live today in the age of the internet. Often I have bumped into people in public places whom I have connected with online mainly by reason of Facebook. I'll oftentimes hear someone say, hey, I know you. The other individual recognizes me from my Facebook profile picture, but in fact, they do not know me at all. It's not uh, a matter of them knowing me so much as they simply recognize me. Chances are they know precious little about me beyond being able to recognize me in public based upon pictures which they have seen online. Sometimes we're a little careless with the phrase, I know you, or I know this person, or I know that person. No, you don't know them at all. You're familiar with them. You may even know some of their story. You, you may know some of their background, some of the experiences that they have been through. But do you really know them? Do you know what motivates them? Do you know what makes them tick? Do you know how sensitive they are? Do you know how easily or how difficult uh, it might be to hurt? feelings. No, when you say I know you, you imply that you have a very deep, intimate, personal knowledge of that individual. Well, I've got news for you. Even before Jeremiah was conceived in the womb of his mother, so this is not my pro-life friend. This is not a passage of scripture that you can legitimately use to justify the notion that life begins at conception. No, you're foolish. You're absolutely foolish if you twist and pervert the word of God to try to make this passage support that notion. The reality is in Jeremiah 1, what God is saying to Jeremiah is, even before you were conceived, even before 
your mother became impregnated with your embryo. I knew you. Hallelujah. This passage has nothing to do with when life is conceived and when life begins. No, this passage is about the foreknowledge of God. The ability of God to know the end from the beginning. The ability of God to know that one day this man will lie down with this woman and the child will be conceived. Now listen to me. And I already know that kid. Even before they are a twinkle in their daddy's eyes, the old saying used to go. Our God declares, I already knew you. Those people will say, well, see, that's why I don't believe in abortion, because when you abort a baby, God already knew that child. Uh, no, my foolish friend, God already knew that child would never see the light of day. Well, maybe God had plans for that child to do. No, God already knew that child was not going to be born into this world. You see, people act like somehow or another our actions affect what God knows and what God is doing. Don't you think for one minute, sweetheart, that your little measly human life has any ability in the universe to affect the plan or the will of God? Don't you think for even a moment? No. God knows what, what babies will be born. He knows what babies will not be born, whether it be due to abortion, whether it be due to a miscarriage, whatever the case might be. God knows. So he knows the lives that are going to successfully come into this world. And he knows those he will be able to use. Let me ask you a question, my dear pro-life friend. What makes you think if God knew Jeremiah before he was even formed in his mother's womb, uh, what makes you think God didn't know that child that your husband threw away with the used condom after y'all made love last night? We think we can play a dog. I can choose the size family I want to have. I'll stop at the number of children that I feel like I, I want to stop at. Because after all, listen to me now. I'm talking to all these hypocritical pro-lifers, okay? Because after all, I cannot trust God. Oh my Lord, have mercy. I cannot trust God to stop my family at a number that I can afford, that I can support, that I can handle. Do you hear what I'm telling you now? You see, so let me tell you, all you people that write and wrong about uh, abortion, every one of you are hypocrites. Every one of you that have ever utilized any form of birth control, you are a blazing, flaming, screaming hypocrite. Oh, that's a little hard, isn't it? The Lord told Jeremiah, he said, you're going to say what I tell you to say. And he said, do not be afraid of their faces. Meaning, he said, don't be worried about the audience's reaction. Don't be worried about how people who are hearing you and seeing you respond. He said, don't you worry about that. I'm going to tell you, when the Lord called me to prophetic ministry, one of the things that I had to learn was that he did not want me to be concerned with uh, whether or not the audience likes what I have to say. Sometimes when I'm preaching, I can literally see a look on certain people's faces in the audience. Not that they dislike what I've said, but it scares them. And they're like, 
Uh oh, I can't believe he just said that. We're in Tennessee. We're in the heart of Trump land. How can pastor say something relative to Donald Trump? How can he do that? Doesn't he know? The Lord said, I'm going to put my words in your mouth and you're going to speak whatever I tell you to speak. He said, don't you be afraid of the audience because I'm there to deliver you. He said, if there's any deliverer needs to be done, I'll take care of it. I'll take care of you. But I've called you to a position that requires you to speak every word that I place in your mouth. I want to tell you there is great comfort today for the child of God in reading these words in Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 4. Before I formed thee in the womb, I knew you. Oh, before you ever came into this world, God knew you. That does not mean he knew what you would experience. That does not mean he knew what you would go through. It means he knows you. He knows your composition. He knows your makeup. He understands your emotional makeup and what makes you tick. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I'm going to tell you, there are many questions that I've had over the years throughout the course of my life. Uh, for instance, the Word of God tells us that God will not put upon us more than we're able to bear. And I've often thought about that and I said, well, Lord, how in the world is it that you're able to know, listen to me now, just how much I can take and just how much I can bear? And the answer comes back from heaven, because I know you. Hallelujah. I'm not familiar with you. I don't recognize you from having seen you in pictures. I don't know about you. I don't know about your life. I don't know about your experiences. I know you. Therefore, I know exactly how much you can take. I know exactly where your threshold is. I know exactly how far I can push things sometimes in order to help you exercise your faith muscle. You see, your faith cannot grow, my friend, if it never has to deal with opposition. Your faith can never grow if you do not experience resistance. This is why so often we go through sickness, we go through disease, we go through troubles and trials, and they seem to last forever before the Lord finally steps in and rescues us. And we say, Lord, why did it take you so long? Remember Mary and Martha at the tomb of Lazarus. Mary, Martha, it took me so long because if your faith is ever going to be greater today than it was yesterday, if your faith is ever going to be greater tomorrow than it is today, you have to experience opposition. You have to experience uh, pushing against that which resists you. He said, so what I've done is I've allowed this circumstance to get beyond, listen to me now, children, to get beyond the place that you could normally believe me. See, if I'd have come while Lazarus was sick, You've always been able to believe me to heal the sick. Oh, hallelujah. I hope you're hearing me today, children. 
I, you have always been able to believe me to heal the sick. You remember him turning to Martha and saying, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Believest thou this? He said, Martha, I know you could always believe me to heal, but now I want you to believe I'm able to resurrect. Hallelujah. We're going a step further. We're going somewhere you've never been before. <laughs> oh, we're going we're gonna to push a little harder. I'm going to make you lift a little more weight than you've ever lifted before. Why? So that your faith can grow. Why? Well, I'll tell you, because down the road a ways in the course of your life, you're going to have some circumstances that are really going to press you, and they're really going to try you, and they're really going to test you, and you're going to need the faith that comes, listen to me, after Lazarus comes out of the tomb. If all you had was faith for Lazarus to be healed, that wouldn't be enough faith for what's coming down the road for you. So therefore, if I'm going to help your faith to grow, if I'm going to help your faith to expand, then I have to uh, cause you to experience opposition. I have to cause you to experience resistance. Like a weightlifter, you push against that resistance by lifting that weight. And that is what rips your muscles. That is what causes your muscles to grow, and your strength to increase. The same thing is true of faith. But luckily, thankfully, God knows us. He knows how far we can go without breaking. Oh, hallelujah. I'm going to tell you, there's an old saying, He knows me better than I know myself. Because there's a lot of times the Lord asks me to go places and do things that uh, I don't think I'm ready for. I don't think I'm qualified to do. I don't think I have the ability to, to go where the Lord's asking me to go, to do what the Lord is asking me to do, to endure what the Lord is asking me to endure. And I look up toward heaven and say, Lord, how in the world can you ask me to do this? I can't do this. And the Lord responds, Charles, I know you. Before I formed you in your mother's belly, I knew you. I know you. I know what you're capable of. I know what you can be. I know what you can do. I know what you can achieve. Oh, hallelujah. And for that reason, you are enduring things that your mind and the enemy are trying to convince you that you're not able to do this. But I'm here to tell you, if I didn't know, listen to me, if I didn't know you, and if I didn't know that you could, I wouldn't have asked you to do it. Oh, hallelujah. I know you. In Isaiah 48, excuse me, 46, verses 9 and 10. Remember the former things of old. For I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is none like me. Listen. Declaring the end from the beginning. And from ancient times the things that are not yet done. Saying my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. What God was saying to Jeremiah had nothing to do with it. Him acknowledging that he was familiar with a life before that life was born in the sense that, uh, you know, uh, I, I'm involved so early in the process. It had nothing to do with timing. It had to do with his 
ability to know everything, to know all the ins and outs, to know exactly how when you're 14 years old, when you're 18 years old, when you're 21 years old, how you're going to respond to this situation or that situation. And he doesn't know that how you're going to respond based upon his foreknowledge of events. Listen to me. But he knows how you respond based upon his knowledge of you. I know everything that kid is going to experience early in life. And I know what those experiences are going to create in him or in her. I know the emotions that those experiences are going to create. I know the habits. I know the tendencies. I know the reactions and the responses. I know the emotional wiring that is going to take place when that child experiences these things. And then later in life, based on my knowledge of that child, I know how they're going to respond. I know how they're going to react. I know how they're going to do with this circumstance or this situation. You may know a fellow classmate at school, but do you know what their whole life consists of? Or what kind of parents they may have? Do you know if they're living in an unhealthy or an abusive environment? Maybe they live in the midst of a highly dysfunctional family. Or are they living a life of privilege and comfort? Even if you were to come, excuse me, even if you were to have access to all the information regarding the circumstances and situations of their life, you still could not in truth say, I know them. Knowing someone goes far beyond knowing their story. Knowing them requires that you have an understanding of who they are and why they are who they are. The Lord is here saying to Jeremiah, before you were even formed, I knew what kind of man you would be. I knew your strengths and I knew your weaknesses. I knew your temperament and your emotional makeup. Therefore, listen, because I knew you in substance, I was able to see that you were someone I could use in a very specific and powerful way. The foreknowledge of the Lord goes so much deeper than His merely knowing about us. It goes to the core of who we are and what makes us who we are. He knows we'll be hyper-emotional or extra-sensitive, for instance. He knows whether we'll be inclined to bully or whether we might be the one who is bullied. 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. But with, will with the temptation also make a way of escape, that ye may be able to bear it. How on earth is God able to control the level of temptation or trials which come upon us so as to prevent a greater load being brought upon us than we're able to bear? How is that possible? Because He knows us. Romans chapter 8 verses 28 through 31 And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. For whom He did foreknow, He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of His Son, 
that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, then he also called. And whom he called, then he also justified. And whom he justified, then he also glorified. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Oh, hallelujah. And all of this begins with what? For whom he did for none. Honey, your being in the rapture pays homage to the fact that God knew you. Hallelujah. That he understood you. That he has your number. You and I can find comfort today in the knowledge that our Creator was fully aware of our very makeup before we were even conceived. He knows us. And more than anything in this world, He desires that we might know Him. Hallelujah. It's not enough for the Lord to look our way and say, I know you. He wants us to be able to look toward heaven and say, Lord, I know you as well. Matthew 11, 25 to 30. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered unto me of my Father. Listen. And no man knoweth the Son but the Father. He said, hey, nobody understands who I really am. Nobody really gets me. Nobody really understands in truth who I am except God. He said, neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal Him. He said, not only does nobody get who I am, nobody understands God. He said, nobody understands the Father. He said, except who I choose to reveal the Father to. Now listen. He said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, listen, and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Is that interesting? He said, nobody gets it. Nobody understands who I am except for the Father. Nobody understands the Father except me. He said, and unto whomsoever I will reveal him. Isn't that what he said? Now in John chapter 14, verses 6 to 11, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If, if, if ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. Now listen. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? Oh my God. Jesus is saying, Honey, there ain't a clear picture of the Father.
stronger than what is standing in front of you right now. There is no way on earth I can show you anything because everything you need to see is standing in front of you right at this moment. Verse 10, Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works sake. The Lord was told Excuse me, the Lord told the learned men of his day that they ought to search the scriptures, the holy canon, which they possessed at their uh, at that time in human history, that which we today call the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, Jesus declared they would find him. Who the central figure in the Old Testament. God! Who will they find there? God! Who then was he that he should be found of them in the sacred pages of the Old Testament text? God! Hallelujah! John 5, 39 Search the scriptures for in them ye think ye have eternal life and they are they which testify of me. Mark 1, 23 through 25. And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, saying, Let us alone, what have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? We read the story in Luke 4, 33 to 35. And in the synagogue there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil and cried out with a loud voice saying, Let us alone, what have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee, who thou art the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace, and come out of him. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him and hurt him not. Why do I read both passages? Because there's a principle of Scripture you must always abide by. Out of the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. Both Matthew and Luke shared this identical story almost word for word. The demons didn't know about Jesus. They knew in reality who Jesus truly was. In James 2.19, the writer writes, Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well, the devils also believe and tremble. Oh, my word, have mercy. Those devils knew who Jesus was. <laughs> and when he stepped into their presence, they cried out. I won't tell you. I've told you the story before. But even in the course of my lifetime, I've had a number of occasions where demoniacs, especially when I was living in New York City, I would come into the presence of a demoniac and they would suddenly cry out, you. I know you. Leave me alone. Get away from me. I know you. And I've had people who were familiar with those individuals who had walked the same streets and seen that same person for many, many years 
tell me I have never ever seen that person do that I have never seen them react like that no because honey demons know where God is and when the Holy Ghost of God is in your life demons are able to see that Thou believest there is one God. You do well. The devils also believe and tremble. Isaiah 43 and verse 11 declares, I, even I am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. Isaiah 45, 21, tell ye, and bring them near, yea, let them take counsel together. Who hath declared this from ancient time? Who hath told it from that time? Have not I the Lord? And there is no God else beside me. A just God and a Savior, there is none beside me. Hosea 13, 4, Yet I am the Lord thy God from the land of Egypt, and thou shalt know no God but me. For there is no Savior beside me me. Isaiah 35, 3 through 5, strengthen ye the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. Even God with a recompense. He will come and save you. Now listen to verse 5. Then of the blind shall be open and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. When John the Baptist sent some of his men to Jesus inquiring, are you in fact the one that I was to proclaim? Are you in fact the one that I was to declare? I'm soon to meet my end and I want to make absolutely certain that I have done my job and done it well. The Lord did not answer them. He said, y'all sit back and watch a while. And then he went about healing. He went about casting out devils. He went about healing leprosy. And after a while, he came back. He said, now you go back and you tell John what you've just seen and heard. Hallelujah. So I'm not going to answer your questions with words. I'm going to answer your questions by reason of my deeds, my conduct, my behavior. And they saw him opening blind eyes. They saw him unstopping the ears of the dead. They went back and reported this to John. And I imagine John immediately thought back to Isaiah 35, 3 through 5, and said, Our God indeed has come to save. Hallelujah. In Psalm 130 to 11, the Lord hath sworn in truth unto David, he will not turn from it. Of the fruit of thy body will I set upon thy throne. God is declaring to David that from David's offspring, from his lineage, God himself will set upon the throne of David. In John chapter 1 verses 1 through 3 as well as verses 10 through 13. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, singular, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Jumping down to verse 10 through 13, He was in the world, and the world was made by Him. And the world, listen, knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of men, but of God. 
John, 1 John 3 and 1, Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world, listen, knoweth us not, because it knew him not. It knew who not. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Who is that pronoun referring to? It's referring back to the Father. Hallelujah. Jesus said, Nobody knows who I am. Nobody knows who the Father is except to those to whom I choose to reveal him. Then he turns around and says to Philip and to the other disciples, Honey, how in the world can you say, show us the Father? He says, you know the Father. You've seen the Father. He says, when you're looking at me, you're looking right at the Father. What is your problem? Oh, children, I want to tell you today, it's a wonderful thing that God is able to look our way and declare, I know you, but it's something special when you're able to look toward heaven and say, Lord, I know you. We sing that song, we sang it this afternoon. I'm glad I know who Jesus is. I'm glad I know who Jesus is. I don't know about him. I know who he is, hallelujah. All oh, the devils knew who he was. Well, I got news for you. So do believers, hallelujah. So do those who have received the revelation from God as to his true identity. In 1 John 4, 1 through 8, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Is come in the flesh. That means he originated somewhere that was not flesh, but he came into the realms of the flesh. Said everything, everybody that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God, listen, he that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit, excuse me, of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And every one that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Oh, I'm going to tell you, Jeremiah 29, bringing this to a close. Jeremiah 29, verse 11, I love what the Lord says. He knows us. He wants us to know Him, but He knows us, and He declares in Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. One day, 
We're going to stand on the streets of glory. And we're going to hug the neck of our beloved Savior. And we will declare as saints who have walked in revelation and truth upon the earth. Master, I know you. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Master, I know you. They're not going to be surprised when they get to heaven and find out there ain't but one. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. They're not, oh, no. They're not going to heaven expecting to see the Father over here, the Son over here, and the Spirit floating around in the air like a dove. No, they know by revelation from the Word of God that Jesus is the Almighty. Hallelujah. That he declares in the book of Revelation, I will be their God and they shall be my sons. That's Jesus talking. Hallelujah. Oh, one day I'm going to be able to look him in the eye. And I'm not recognizing him from pictures. But I'm going to be able to say, I know you. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Would you stand with me this afternoon? Amen.